Hello, David from Guitarist here. Today we are looking at a Turnstone TG acoustic guitar made by the luthier called Rosie Heidenrich down in Surrey Sussex borders. This is a very, very special guitar as is reflected in the, the cost. The price is 12,500 roughly. It's not very often that we get to play a guitar of this stature, as it were, um, because the soul luthiers, the, the sort of one-man bands, one-woman bands of the luthery world, very, very rarely have overstock, if you see what I mean. They, they, they rarely have a guitar to hand to send to a magazine or, or whatever. There's a two-year waiting list at Rose's... Um, workshop and so you can imagine if you've already waited two years for a guitar you don't want to wait another three months for some um, uh, some people in a guitar magazine to uh, hold on to it and hold it back or even play it or even touch it or look at it so uh, this is something which is quite unique for us as well to have a guitar of this caliber in our hands or in my hands as it uh, as it turns out so what do you get for that kind of outlay? Obviously we're talking pro range, although Rosie tells me that her customer base is made of all sorts of players, players who want a premium instrument. They want something which has got a, a collectible element to it, is of premium quality in terms of build, in terms of materials and things like that. Something that is just lovely to look at as well as lovely sounding instrument and everything. So let's go through the, the basic body woods, um, which aren't gonna give you a clue incidentally to how this thing plays or how it sounds. And uh, having played it a little bit now myself, um, I can tell you that it's an absolute, absolute dream to play. But we'll come on to that later and you'll get a chance to hear for yourself how it sounds in a professional guitarist's hands uh, later on when we have Clive Carroll play a piece at the end of this video. Clive is a virtuoso of the uh, solo acoustic guitar world. Right, let's go through the body woods. Um, to begin with, we have a redwood top. Redwood sort of has this quality that sits between cedar and spruce in terms of a soundboard. Um, it has wonderful depth. It has very, very good for finger style. You, you almost get an instant response from it, but it's also a very warm wood, but it has that sort of spruce sparkle to it, um, factored into its overall sound. Uh, the neck sorry the fingerboard is ebony as is the bridge the saddle and the nut are both bone the back and sides of the guitar are made from madagascan rosewood now everybody knows that rosewoods are a bit of a contentious thing um, they've been on the cites list which is the uh, in people who, who keep an eye on endangered species and everything. And the very famous Brazilian rosewood, of course, is very, very difficult to get hold of these days and very, very expensive because of its rarities. And there are all sorts of restriction, uh, restrictions on uh, how you can export it and everything. It's very, very tightly controlled. It's sort of acknowledged now that Madagascan rosewood is taking its place in a way as a, an absolute premium tone wood for acoustic guitars. What do you get with rosewood as opposed to mahogany or some other wood? Rosewood has depth and complexity in terms of harmonic response and things like that. You get a very, very complex tone out of it, full of, full of overtones and everything. It's wonderful for finger style. It gives a, a 
immaculate sustain to the extent that I, I've played some guitars uh, with rosewood back and sides, uh, posh rosewood back and sides, which sound like they've got their own reverb unit. An amazing kind of sustain and very, very sweet richness to the to the tone. So Madagascan Rosewood is rapidly coming up there. It's quite rare as well. So this is this is a premium uh, a premium bodywood. The neck is made of koa, which is slightly unusual. We don't come across it that often, but koa is another wood which is uh, is quite rare from the point of view that there's only one place on earth that you can get it from, which is Hawaii. Um, as you can see, it's got a, a really, really nice figure to it. The neck is, uh, I think Rosie refers to it as a fairly shallow C profile. It's in immensely comfortable in the hand. It's, it, it suits the contour of my hand perfectly, and I didn't hear any complaints from Clive when he played it uh, as, as well. The back of the headstock is just described as burl. Um, as you can see there, there's this lovely, um, lovely patterning to the wood on the back there. The front of the headstock is, I understand it to be uh, Madagascan rosewood as well, although it's, it's very, very dark. Um, and you've also got this lovely um, figuring at the top of the headstock, which is Rosie's kind of trademark. She doesn't put the name of the guitar on the top of there, the turnstone guitar. What you've got is the outline of a turnstone, the bird, in flight at uh, the top, which is a lovely little, lovely little touch. The tuners are go-to, black buttons, gold. Um, the frets are gold Evo. The inlays are all obviously custom, um, very beautiful. Uh, what else, what else can I tell you? The bowl that's on the back of the headstock is also reflected in the rosette here. Um, you've got this cutaway at the top of the, the fretboard, which actually kind of gives you an, uh, an extra fret on the top two strings, at least. Um, there's no pickup installed. Uh, there's not even an end pin on this, but bear in mind that everything Rosie turns out is basically a custom order. So if you did want to order a guitar from Rosie, you can tell her exactly what you want. So there's there's no um, no marks taken away for that. Beautiful, beautifully rendered cutaway here. And you've also got something which Rosie calls the Rosie rollover here, which is just basically the, the wood in that bit that usually digs into your arm in an acoustic guitar has been literally rolled over. So it's a lovely, comfortable guitar to play. In terms of body size, it's a, a grand auditorium, um, which is, again, very, very comfortable. It's very, very similar, maybe slightly bigger than an OM, which is considered by the Fingerstar fraternity as being the most comfortable guitar to sit and play. It it's, tends to have everything. Um, this very, very similar. As I say, what I can't get across in a video is how comfortable this guitar is to play, how easy it is to play. Um, Clive, when he was here, pointed out that this is a very young guitar, which indeed it is, because the date inside the, the sound hole tells us that it was made in May and it's only August now. So in terms of acoustic guitars, that's very, very young. And what's going to happen as this guitar matures is the bass is going to get deeper, get broader. Um, Clive was saying that if you play down here, those sort of notes, that kind of frequency range will bloom eventually, especially with the, the rosewood. This is the sort of thing that rosewood does. When all these bodywoods start effectively singing from the same hymn book, then it has an effect on the tone. It takes a while. It takes a while. With a spruce top, 
it'll take longer. Redwood and cedar, not quite so much. You tend to get a lot of the, the tonal output of a guitar almost straight out of the box sort of thing, but everything will mature as it goes on. Koa matures, for instance. Um, also, the trebles will sweeten considerably as well. So it's a, quite a price to pay for an acoustic guitar, but the investment doesn't stop there. Part of the investment is how the, it will develop tonally over time. It's a very even guitar. Even now, it's a very even guitar to play. You've got nothing is, is nothing stands out. Nothing booms or nothing is um, is is at all kind of underdeveloped. It doesn't sound underdeveloped. It's a very balanced output. Now you've already um, you've already heard me play a little bit of fingerstyle at the beginning. We'll also do a little bit of strumming to show you that it can handle that as well. Right, now you've heard the guitar do a little bit of finger style, a little bit of uh, strumming. The next thing to do is to place the guitar in the hands of a virtuoso. And uh, it just so happened that Clive happened to be at the studio the day that uh, we got this guitar. So we asked him if he'd very kindly play a piece. And here it is. Thank you. 